Lord, everyone, praise God. Let's stand this morning in honor to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, as we open our praise and worship service. We want to welcome all to the house of the Lord. We want to welcome all those by the way of web to join in with us today, and let's have church. Let's lift up the name of Jesus. Let's worship him today. Psalms 134 and 2 says, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. We're talking about the God that made the heavens and the earth. There's nobody like Jesus. Let's open this service by lifting up our hands and blessing our God today. Lord, we love you. God, we worship you. We bless your holy name, the God that made the heavens and the earth, the Almighty. Hallelujah, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Thank you, Jesus. God, we worship your mighty name. Hallelujah. Now let's worship him in song this morning with our praise singing.
Let's worship him this morning. Let's lift up his name, magnify him in this place. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord, we lift up the name of Jesus. God, we worship your mighty name, the Almighty. Hallelujah. Praise God. We love you this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Truly, the presence of God is in his house today. Hallelujah. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And I believe his eyes are open, his ears are open to the cries of his people. We have many needs today. We're going to ask them to put the needs on the board. The prayer request, we have so many needs. We serve a mighty God that's able to do above and beyond what we could ask or think. He went to Calvary for our sins and our healing. He answers prayer. He's been answering prayer all week. Today is no exception. Hallelujah. Praise God. His hands are not short. He's not short on power. He has all power. We want to go to the Lord in prayer, especially want to remember Brother Chris Perry this morning. It's in the hospital. Been in there, I think, 14 days. But God has an answer. We're going to pray God would touch him this morning. And if you have a special need with uplifted hand today, God knows all about it. He knows about the unspoken request. 
Let's take all of these needs to him today because he's able, he's faithful. Lord, we thank you. God, we come before you today. Hallelujah. God, we bring all of these requests on the board. Lord, you know every one of them individually that need healing, that need deliverance, they need problems worked out in their life. So many here in this audience today, God, has lifted up a need before you. God, we pray you would touch that need, bring them deliverance, bring them an answer to prayer. God, touch Brother Perry as he's in the hospital this morning. God, give him comfort, give him peace, give him healing in his body, Lord. Hallelujah. Bring him back to your house. God, we love you this morning. We worship you for all that you have done. God, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Let's worship our God today. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah.
Oh, hallelujah. Come on, let's praise him. Let's love him. Let's worship him. Hallelujah. Oh, what singing. Oh, what worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It may not be appropriate to talk in tongues in the Walmart checkout line, but ladies and gentlemen, here we are in the house of God, and the worship is going up, and it's appropriate to shout unto God, to worship and praise Him. Would you lift your hands one more time? Let's shout unto our God. Come on, let's give Him high praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, praise God, praise God. Our Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. We're going to experience good things to hear together today because we have a good God. Amen. Good things are going to happen because we have a good God. It ain't because we're so hot. It ain't because we've been so good, but our Lord has been good to us, hasn't he? Come on, if he's been good to you, would you give him praise? Come on, he's been good to you, would you give him praise? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, would you turn and shake somebody's hand or give them the holy bump or give them the holy elbow, whatever you feel comfortable doing, but let's make folks welcome. Make folks welcome to the house of God. Come on, grin at them real good. Come on, grin at them real good. Make sure they're welcome to Tennessee. Make sure they're welcome here in the house of our God. Amen. For a few moments, you may be seated. Praise God. We're going to uh, receive our offering in just a few moments. I'm going to make our announcements at this time. Uh, first of all, make plans to be here tonight for service at 6.30 p.m. And let's come early for pre-service prayer and pray down the power. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man makes much power available. Your prayers are powerful, and God answers prayer. Come and pray with us at 6 p.m., and then we will have service tonight at 6.30. We hope to see everyone in Wednesday night Bible study at 7 p.m., here in the sanctuary, I will be preaching and teaching, and I'm going to be preaching further and teaching further on end time revival. We want you to be here with us. Our VBS is next week. I'm so excited and pleased about this. Please, please register. If you have not already, the dates are July 28th, 29th, and 30th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. and Sunday, August the 1st at 11.15 a.m., a meal will be provided for the children each night. And then on Sunday, we will have a meal for everyone in the Family Life Center, bounce houses and slides, all of this after service, and we will have a great time with our kids. We are excited to have Brother David Bridges, the pastor in uh, um, North Carolina, Morganton, North Carolina. He's coming to do our VBS, and he's a phenomenal children's minister and so this vbs is for children ages 2 through 11 and you can register on our eagle bend apostolic app or on our website at eaglebend.org we're looking forward to a great time with our children i gotta tell you something i went to pull out of the parking lot last night in my my toyota and uh, it's got a, a screen on there and it had the maps up on the screen and I was pulling out, and it had a blue dot on there, and it said EBAC. I was very impressed. Toyota must have updated their maps, and they've got our church on the map. I think we ought to give the Lord a hand for that. That was pretty cool. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. And uh, Whitewater Rafting is coming up, our annual Whitewater Rafting Church, rafting trip. Um. Uh, we're, not, we're going whitewater rafting. Say that 10 times fast, whitewater rafting. We're going white. No, I can't say it. We're going to go down the river, folks. <laughs> and so pay up by August the 1st. The cost is $20 per person. That's on a Saturday and then Sunday. We'll all be in here repenting over how we misbehaved on the river. Praise God. Come and go with us. And as always, you can find everything that we announce and more 
on our bulletin via our mobile app. All right, we're going to receive our offering at this time. We ask you to get your money out uh, and let's give liberally and cheerfully as unto the Lord. Our video crew is going to put our prayer up on the screen this morning. Would you stand with me? We say this prayer together uh, in honor to the Lord and and um, and we're obeying his word in tithes and offerings. And God bless you as you give today. Would you join me? Everybody read with me and pray with me. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given back to me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithe today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interests and incomes, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family is saved and walking with God. Perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in, and I am blessed going out. All that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord a great hand of love and praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The music's going to play, the singers are going to sing, and we're going to give. You will march under the direction of our ushers, please. In Jesus' name, God bless you.
Come on, would you lift your hands? Right now, the Holy Ghost is moving in this place. Let God touch you right now. Hallelujah. You are here mending hearts. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Right now, people are praying. The Holy Ghost is moving in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Amen. Let's love the Lord together. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's appropriate to worship the Lord right now. You are our way maker, our mighty Savior, our great shepherd, the bishop of our souls. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We have just finished one of the greatest camp meetings that I have ever been to. Um, just a tremendous time of worship and praise to our God over this last week. And I want to commend our praise team who on Thursday night just poured their souls out and did a fantastic, uh, excellent, anointed, and well-practiced job. I'm proud of you guys. Proud of them. And uh, I'm also proud of our pastor. He delivered... Uh, what I considered the signal message of the morning messages, uh, he did a tremendous job, and uh, I was so very proud of um, <clears throat> of Blake Miller, and um, we love them. We love our pastor and our pastor's wife, and and I think that I'm sure they're watching. So let's give brother and sister Miller our love and appreciation. They they did a fantastic job. I was so proud of them. And I want to tell you something, folks. God ministered to me at that camp meeting. We need every one of these events. You know, sometimes people, uh, they, they, they just stay home from things. Well, it ain't, it ain't you know, it, it ain't in my backyard or it's not in, in Lake City or it ain't in Clinton, so I ain't going. You know what, folks? We need the wider church. We need the broader fellowship and and I, I had something I, I needed God to work on. I needed God's help with. And I've been struggling with it for some weeks. And, and I went to first, I went to, I went to every service. I went to the first service. I didn't really get anything. I, I enjoyed it. I listened to everything. But, I, but God didn't really speak. And God didn't really minister to my need that I was struggling with. I went to the second night service. And God, I, I heard a great, great message but uh, God didn't really minister to me about that particular need. And, and I was praying, and in the, the third night service, God just came down, ladies and gentlemen, and he touched my heart, and he gave me a peace, and he, he ministered to my heart. And I want to tell you, you know, sometimes you just got to keep on going and going. But if you will, God's going God's gonna to minister to you. And oh, what a wonderful, wonderful time it was. And I want to encourage you folks to get out there and, 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 and uh, attend all the rallies, be here at every church service, because there's going to be something for you each time. And I thank God for what he did for me personally. And um, I'm also excited about this, folks. I'm excited that little Jillian Massengill got the Holy Ghost at the camp meeting. I'm excited that little Jack Langford got the Holy Ghost at the camp meeting. And I'm excited my granddaughter, Heidi, Heidi Bear, got the Holy Ghost at the camp meeting. I'm telling you, the Spirit of God was moving. Praise God for all of these wonderful, wonderful victories. Praise God, praise God. New souls born into the kingdom of God. And um, that song. And uh, praise God, I have told Sister Brooke, I said, you know that song about your children and their children and their children and their children? I look back there and, oh, uh, Brother Pemberton was, while we were worshiping God, he was waving little Max around. He had, he had Max way up in the air and waving him around. And praise God, that's the way to worship. Take that kid, and throw him up there in the air before the Lord, you know. And I mean, don't throw him too high. I'm just saying, you know, don't mistake me here. But uh, praise God, I want your children and my children, my grandchildren, and their children and their children to serve God. And, and you know what? We've got a new one that's snuck in here today. And I have been watching this. Oh, God. Look at that. That's a little fern. What's her name? 
Fern Mary. And usually I wag him around. But I've been watching you, and he's so in love with this little baby girl, he ain't going to turn her over to me. <laughs> so I'm going well, I can't. Okay, okay. Wag away. Well, praise God, I like that. Oh, dear Lord, look at this. Isn't this the sweetest thing you've ever seen? Oh. I was at, at, at the camp meeting, and uh, the, I can't remember their names, but they attended our church now. They got a, got a new baby, Tim, Tim Johnson. Tim Johnson, his little baby girl, and I held that little girl. You know, there's, there's just something almost heavenly about these babies. It really is the truth. They are a gift from God, aren't they? Somebody in our church had a baby, and I was over there visiting, and I just sat there and held that baby for 45 minutes. It just ministered to my soul, that little precious little baby. And this is Fern Mary. She is precious, precious, precious. I hope she looks like her mother. And your brain, right? Yeah, I saw that. Oh, she's got your forehead. Ain't that precious? Praise God, praise God. You know, all the things in the world, praise God. All the best gifts come from the Lord, don't they? All the best things come from the Lord. Praise God. And Eve said, I've gotten a man child from the Lord. Well, this time we've got a girl child from the Lord. But it's still from the Lord, ain't it? It's precious and wonderful. Fern Mary, would you give her and pardon, Marian as in Maid Mary and Fern Mary, and would you give mom and dad and the Lord a great hand? Praise God. God bless Jillian, who got the Holy Ghost. God bless the Massengill family. God bless the Langford family. Little Jack got the Holy Ghost. God bless the Solomon family. Little Heidi got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> God bless you. Burns mom and dad. They've been blessed for the little, little girl child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A thousand generations. Your family. Your children. Your children. Hallelujah. Now let's lift our hands and give God glory and praise. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. We know that angels are all around us and our children, our, our district superintendent uh, preached about angels and what a stirring message it was about how, uh, how angels minister to us. And, and so the angel of the Lord came and said, Thou shalt call her name Fern. <laughs> so we've got little Fern with us now. Praise God. Remain standing with, with me. We welcome all of our guests. Would you put your hands together? Welcome all of our guests today. Thank you for being with us. God bless you. I'm going to be speaking today about Jesus, the chief shepherd. Let's turn to Mark chapter number 30, uh, chapter number 6. Chapter number 6. And verse number 30, 
and I'm preaching from the NLT or somebody said, now loved by triplet. <laughs> Praise God, the NLT. And we're going to read together. Um, <clears throat> read along with me, would you? It would be a great help if you'd just read from the screen and, and, uh, and let's read together. Here we go. The apostles returned to Jesus from their ministry tour and told him all they had done and taught. Then Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. But many people recognized them and saw them leaving, and people from many towns ran ahead along the shore and got there ahead of them. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place, and it's already getting late. <clears throat> but Jesus said, you feed them. With what, they asked. We'd have to work for months to earn enough money to buy food for all these people. How much bread do you have, he asked. Go and find out. They came back and reported, we have five loaves of bread and two fish. Then Jesus told the disciples to have the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of 50 or 100. Jesus took up the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven, and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread to the disciples so they could distribute it to the people. He also divided the fish for everyone to share. They all ate as much as they wanted. And afterwards, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftover bread and fish. Praise God. <clears throat> Would you lift up a hand with me and let's pray toward heaven together. God, we lift up our hands, our voices, hallelujah, into higher places. We pray now, God, that as we speak the word of God, Lord, that you will break that bread of life to to me personally, and then allow me to distribute, Lord, to this congregation what you have given to me this morning. Bless, Lord, the Word of God. The, the, the Scripture says that you blessed it. Bless this Word this morning. Bless these loaves and this fish, God. Lord, please touch the hearts of people and feed their souls this morning. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. Amen. We've been doing a lot of things this morning. One more time, would you grin at somebody real big and shake their hand and smile at them? And praise God. Make them welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> there was a vast crowd. The scripture says that 5,000 men were fed that day. In this crowd of 5,000 men, if you count women and children, it could be 20,000 or more people. And this, this crowd, this great crowd has followed Jesus around the shoreline as he and the disciples sailed across the Sea of Galilee, hoping to find a secluded spot to catch their breath and find just a little rest. But when they arrived at the place that they were going, when Jesus and his disciples arrived in the boat at the place where they were going, the people were already there awaiting them. Luke says, a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, they were healed and the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him, and he healed them all. The key passage of our scripture is verse 34 of Mark chapter number 6. He had compassion on them 
because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And so Jesus' shepherdly compassion was moved by this vast crowd. And they were this vast, needy crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, people have great needs. There are great needs in this place today that I do not know. But I want you to know that Jesus knows every one. And his shepherdly compassion and care was stirred by this needy crowd. They came to be healed of their diseases, Luke said, and he healed them. They were vexed by unclean spirits, but they were healed by Jesus' power. The Bible says that virtue went out from him at them. Virtue went out from him and healed them all. Virtue, ladies and gentlemen, means miraculous power. I want you to know that Jesus can do what nobody else can do. He is the miracle worker, as they sang this morning. And so virtue, miraculous power, was flowing out of Jesus. And the Bible says he healed them all. And I looked up that word healed, and it means to wait upon, to serve, to relieve. Jesus was like a doctor or a nurse. He waited upon everybody. He served every one of them that were hurting, that were vexed, that needed healing, whose hearts were wounded. I was so touched by my brother, um, Chris Perry, and you need to remember him in prayer. But I, I visited him. He's been in the hospital two weeks now. He's had such severe lung trouble. And, and, and he said, I've been to other hospitals, and uh, they've not been able to find anything. He said, but when I came in, the first day I came in, the doctor came, to, came down. He said he pulled up the chair right in front of me and sat down, and he looked me in the eye, and he took a hold of my hand, and he said, Sir, we're going to find out what is wrong. We are going to find out what is wrong, and we're not going to quit until we do. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know we've got a Savior like that who will look you right in the eye and say, I, he doesn't have to find out, but he knows what is wrong. He knows what's going on. He's going to say, I'm going to take care of it. He relieved them. He served them. You know, ladies and gentlemen, you, you can tell Jesus exactly what's wrong. You can tell Jesus exactly what's bothering you. Let me just give you a little insight. I don't pray. I holler at God. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, I tell him from time to time, God, I'm really sick of this. You people don't believe that, but it's true. God, I'm tired of this. I want something different. And ladies and gentlemen, you can talk directly to the Lord and tell him exactly what your need is. In fact, he wants you to talk directly to him. You need to be honest with him. Praise God. You need to be open with him. You need to tell him what you want and what you need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell him exactly what you need because he's here to wait upon you. He's here to serve you. He's here to heal you. He's here to relieve you. And, the, and, and so Jesus ministered to this vast crowd of 20,000 or more. I don't know how he did it. I don't know how it was. But, but the Bible says that, that virtue flowed for him, from him. At one point, the, the woman with the issue of blood just came and touched Jesus' garment. I don't know how many people just touched his garments and were healed. I don't know how many he laid his hands on. I don't know how many he looked at and pointed at and, and, and spoke the word and they were healed. Praise God. But ladies and gentlemen, he ministered to everybody in that crowd. I want to tell you, Jesus is here to minister to every one of you. This morning, he's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He knows where we're hurting. You may not get it this morning. You may have to get it tonight. You can get it this morning. I'm just telling you about my camp meeting experience. But I've been hurting, and Jesus came and ministered to me. Hallelujah. And I want you to know, I want you to know that the great shepherd of your soul is here this morning. He healed them all. But you know what the disciples said? Jesus healed them all. And then the disciples said, Lord, this is a remote place. We're out here in the boonies, Lord. It's already getting late. Send the crowds away. 
so they can go to the farms and the villages to buy something to eat. But Jesus said, no, 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 no. You feed them. Listen, Jesus met every need. He healed, healed them all, healed everyone. And then the disciples didn't get it. And they said, we need to send them away to get some food. Jesus said, no, 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 no. We don't want to send them out into the world. We don't want them to go out somewhere else and get that need met. We want to meet their needs here. Hallelujah. We want to feed them ourselves. Don't send them out into the world where they're going to eat something that's going to poison their soul. You feed them. Oh, oh, come on. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Lord, would you lift up your hands toward heaven and, and would you pray a minute with me? Hallelujah. Jesus doesn't want his sheep being fed by this world. He wants to feed them exactly what they need through his own hands. What this world gives, ladies and gentlemen, is supposedly good for food. You know, you don't need, you don't, oh man, you don't want to miss this movie. Oh, you need to watch so-and-so on the TV. Let me, let me tell you something. This world, the food that this give, world gives is supposedly good for us, but it's really absolutely worthless to sustain us as spiritual beings. I don't care. I love to play golf. Go play all the golf you want. I don't care if you love the Vols. Hallelujah for the Vols. But ladies and gentlemen, only Jesus can satisfy your soul. You got to get something for your heart and for your soul. Only what Jesus gives us will satisfy our souls. And the great shepherd wants to supply every need that we have. He healed them of all their diseases. He fed them and nourished them. And the Bible says he taught them many things. Ladies and gentlemen, the philosophies and the beliefs of this world will only lead to death. Jesus said, however, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. I'm telling you, when Pastor Miller steps to this pulpit and he starts preaching the word of God, I can feel life flowing into my soul. I can feel me, my, my heart being nourished. I can feel encouragement. Hallelujah. I can feel depression lifting. Hallelujah. I can feel a voice speaking to me. Come on, Dave, you can make it. Is there anybody that's ever come into the house of God feeling like you've been run over by a truck, but you come in here and Jesus lifts you up? Come on, lift up your hands with me, would you? Come on, let's praise God this morning. He's the shepherd and the bishop of your soul. <laughs> He's the bishop of your soul. He's the chief shepherd. No animal is more helpless and more stupid than a sheep. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been around them or not, but they really are a miserable creature. <laughs> when I was a kid, we farmed in Iowa, and the farming was so bad we also... Uh, cut pulpwood and logs to make extra money on the side. We were out cutting pulpwood one day. We were in this farmer's, on this, another farmer's farm, cutting pulpwood off of his property. And he had a, he had a bunch of sheep out there and they were all grazing around it. And they just wandered around there. They, they were, and, and I just decided, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch one of them things, see what that thing will do, you know. <laughs> and I snuck out from behind a tree and I ran and grabbed this sheep and, I, and I, I jerked him up off the ground. I tackled him. I jerked him up off the ground. And I had him, and he struggled for about one or two seconds. And then he just quit because he realized he didn't have a chance. He just gave up, you know. Miserable, stupid, defenseless creatures. They stink. You know, their wool is full of briars and burrs and no animal is more helpless or more stupid or more in need of a shepherd than a And goats are even worse because they're stupid, but they're also rebellious and stubborn. On top of being stupid. But you know what Psalms 95 says? 
We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. I just called you stupid, didn't I? <laughs> Helpless, in need of a shepherd. Praise God, but we are, aren't we? Amen. We, we are in need of a shepherd. We're in need of a shepherd. Isaiah 53 and 6 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. People are like sheep and goats. They can be easily distracted. They easily wander off, lose their focus, lose their way. Sheep don't have it in them to provide for themselves. They don't have it in them to fend for themselves. And when we wander off, when we lose our way, then we take ourselves out from beneath the care of the great shepherd, and we are in real trouble. We are in real trouble. We become hungry and malnourished because we are no longer feeding in those green pastures of Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me in green pastures. Ladies and gentlemen, when we leave the shepherd behind, we lose those green pastures. We're no longer feeding in those green pastures. And as Isaiah 44, 20 said, he feedeth on ashes. A deceived heart hath turned him aside. Our hearts can be easily deceived. We're sheep. Our hearts can be easily deceived and we're turned aside and we wander off the path. We need the shepherd. We need the great shepherd and the bishop of our souls. We become we, we, we leave the green pastures. We're no longer feeding in those green pastures of Psalms 23. We become sick and in need of the great shepherd to anoint our head with oil. He anointeth my head with oil. My cup runneth over. We become sick and in need of that great shepherd to anoint our head with oil, lay his hands upon us. We are vulnerable, easy prey for the devil. I shall never forget grabbing that big old sheep and jerking him up off the ground, and he just quit. He had no fight in him. Ladies and gentlemen, there's not a one of us that's a match for the devil in and of ourselves. But when we have the Holy Ghost, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen? But if we're wandering off the path, we're easy prey for the devil. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, when we wander off the path, we are literally lost. We are literally lost lost. And so Jesus looked at the, those multitudes and he looked at their physical condition and he said, they are physically sick, but through his divine eyes, he said, they are really spiritually sick. And he healed them all. He looked at their physical condition and he said, they are physically sick, but from my perspective, as their creator and as their God, they are really spiritually sick. Their stomachs are growling because they are hungry, but really even greater is their spiritual hunger, and they are desperate for food spiritually. <clears throat> the crowd is milling about this way and that. They don't really know which way to go. This crowd of 20,000 people, some are milling here and milling there, but they are not just physically lost. They haven't lost their way. They haven't come out here in this, in, in this remote place. They're not just really lost in this remote place, but they are lost spiritually. He viewed their physical condition, and by his divine discernment, he focused upon their spiritual need. The crowd is sick, but they are spiritually sick and deformed. They are hungry, but they are really starving and malnourished spiritually. They are milling about and lost, but they are really lost souls perishing. And ladies and gentlemen, we have probably a hundred names right here of souls that are in that condition. They are deeply and desperately lost in need of the great shepherd. <clears throat> and just as Jesus 
looked at the physical condition of the crowd and he saw their spiritual condition, we can kind of reverse engineer this or use reverse logic, if you will, and we can deduce the condition of these precious souls by their physical condition. If we look at them physically, they may be well and sound physically. They may be cared for. They may have a family doctor. They may have a pediatrician. They may have a a dentist. They may have a podiatrist. They may have everything they need. Their bodies may be in great health. But ladies and gentlemen, and they may be well and sound physically, but they are really sick and hurting and vexed spiritually. And they may be well fed, ladies and gentlemen, and have a freezer full of steaks, but they are miserable and poor and blind and naked and hungry spiritually. They may, they may be walking around saying, you know, I, I think I need to go on a diet, Dad. But they really, really, they may be overweight. They may be carrying extra pounds, but really spiritually, they are hurting. Their stomachs are growling. They don't have what they need to survive. They're malnourished, and they need the great shepherd to feed them. They may have GPS in their car and maps on their phone, but ladies and gentlemen, they are lost, lost, lost. They may be able to find their way to the most remote part of Tennessee, but ladies and gentlemen, where they really need to find their way to is the house of God. They are desperately lost, and they need the great shepherd. These are souls that we love. These are souls that are precious to us. Let me read to you a brief story, and then I'll close. In the 1870s, there were two brothers in the Deir el-Bahari region of Egypt who were shepherds. The story goes that one of their goats, you know, those stupid, rebellious, and stubborn goats, one of their goats strayed off and ascended a very high mountain. In this, in this region, This is called the Valley of the Kings, and this is extremely rugged, extremely rugged area. As the brothers chased after this goat, a long upward chase, which is familiar to the goat, by the way. Goats love the high places. They they have no problem with that. But these men were were running and chasing after this goat and suddenly disappeared into a deep cave. The shaft where the goat had fallen was nearly vertical. So the brothers tied themselves together with a rope. And one brother lowered the other into the darkness to rescue the errant goat. Let me stop here and say something. Ladies and gentlemen, what would it profit a man if a man should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And these brothers, they loved that goat enough that they would risk their lives. We got to love these souls enough to sacrifice part of our own life. Part of our own life. Maybe, maybe a meal here and a meal there needs to be sacrificed. Part of your own life needs to be sacrificed. Maybe five or ten minutes in prayer and five or ten minutes of prayer here and there need to be sacrificed. Because why? Because Jesus is putting a love for that soul down in your heart. Jesus is the great shepherd is coming to you and saying, come on, help me shepherd. I want you to be my under shepherd. I want you to care for that one. I want you to, I want you to tell them of my love for them. And all, let, me, let, me, let me just stop here and let me just say something. There's many of these people that have been filled with the Holy Ghost, but they, they, they run from the house of God for whatever. But let, me, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because Jesus said, my sheep know my voice, and another they will not follow. And when somebody's been filled with the Holy Ghost, and they stray away from the house of God, they still know that voice down in their heart. And they don't want to come here, because when they get here, the voice of God begins to speak to that heart, and it just rips their heart out. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been there, and you've been there. We know what it's like to come to the house of God, and God begin to speak to us. So ladies and gentlemen, let's pray for them. 
Let's lift them up because their hearts, and let's ask God to touch their heart so that their heart will be tender to the word of God. And so these brothers tied themselves together and, uh, and one let the other down into the darkness. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to love these goats. We got to love these sheep. And, uh, and, and when the man descended into the darkness, all of a sudden, the story, and this is a true story, by the way, all, of, all at once, this man found himself surrounded by gold everywhere and the faces of pharaohs and queens of old. This was in 1870, and it was the, it included, it was the largest cache of royal mummies and funerary treasure ever found. It included the mummies of Sequenere, Tea, Amos the first, Amenhotep the first, the first three Tutmosids, Seti the first, Ramses first, third and ninth, the coffin of Ramses first. In all, the occupants of this cave were in excess of 50 kings, princes, and courtiers with almost 6,000 accompanying objects. It was a cash that was incalculable in value. It was as if all of the ancient world had been concentrated, of the ancient pharaohic world had been concentrated in this single tomb. This is what I want to tell you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a great shepherd who wants to send us out as under shepherds after these precious souls. And when we find one of those souls, we have found the greatest treasure that has ever been found. You will go out chasing a goat, but you will come back with a soul that is worth more than all the galaxies of the universe. Ladies and gentlemen, you will come back with the greatest treasure that you can imagine. Would you stand with me this morning? Every one of us is in need of the great shepherd. Every one of us is, has been lost, and every one of us has been hurting. And now, praise God, here we are. Here we are in the house of God. The Bible talks about all different kinds of sins. And then it said, and such were some of you. Is there anybody out here that was ever an idiot before you came to Jesus? Let me see your hand. Is there any, come on, keep your hand up. Is there anybody that was ever stupid before you came to Jesus? Come on. Were you ever a, a, a rebellious sheep or a goat? And you know what it's like. You know what it's like, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I want you to know, I want you to remember how hurting you were and how much your soul needed to be forgiven and how much you needed the, the, the mercy of God and the filling, infilling of the Holy Ghost. Do you remember that? Come on. Would you raise your hand and say, I remember how much I needed Jesus. Praise God. Well, I want you to know those people out there are hurting too. Your sons and your daughters, your grandchildren, my sons, my daughters, my grandchildren, they're out there hurting, ladies and gentlemen, and they need Jesus. They need the great shepherd of their souls to come alongside them and feed them and lay his hands on them, anoint them with Holy Ghost oil. Bless them one more time. Praise God. Praise God. I want you to join me around this altar this morning, and I want you to come, and I want you to help me to pray. Praise God that God would put a love for these souls in our hearts, that God would speak to our hearts this morning and that we would get busy about our Father's business and we would start searching for that lost soul that seems to be a goat. Seems. Have you ever, you ever called on somebody and invited them to church and they said, no, nah, I got something else to do. You ever done that? You ever, you ever done that? When I first came to this town, I was knocking on doors, and I knocked on a man's door, and he said, I told him, I'm David Triplett, and we're starting a, here, a church here in Clinton. And he said, no matter, don't we have enough churches here already? And he slammed the door in my face, you know, just, just cut me like a knife. Ladies and gentlemen, we've all had somebody that's put us off, and but I want you to know that if we will pray, God's going to hear our prayers. And if you have a name that's in here this morning, 
I want to ask you to begin to pray for them because as I said earlier, the effectual, James said, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man makes much power available. I found something out, and that is when you pray, there's a lot of power released. It may, when you pray, there's a lot of power released. Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. Would you lift up your hands and would you pray for lost souls with me this morning? Lord, each one of these souls is worth more, more than all the treasure of the universe. Oh, Jesus. Each one of these souls, God, is hurting. Some are vexed by devils. Some, Lord, are spiritually malnourished. Lord Jesus, they're directionless and lost. They don't know which way to go. They don't know what to do. Oh, God, but you are the great shepherd. You have compassion for them. Oh, Jesus, Lord, when our hearts hurt, Lord, your heart hurts. Lord Jesus, when we are weeping for our loved ones, Lord, and our friends, you are weeping also. But he that goeth forth and weepeth shall doubtless come again, bringing his sheaves with him. Oh, God, as we cry out to you, hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we believe you're going to help us to come back again with sheaves in our arms, lost sheep in our arms, lost rebellious goats in our arms, God. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, we pray this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We pray this morning. We pray this morning, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your mighty name. Praise your mighty name. Lord, I pray for my lost loved ones. I pray, God, for brothers and sisters who once attended this church. God, that have strayed, oh God. I pray for them this morning. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Would you, would you pray with somebody nearby? Would you, if, you, if it's okay, if you feel all right about it, would you share a name with them and let them share a name with you? And, and would you pray for each other? As the Bible says, to bear ye one another's burdens. If you've got somebody that's, that you love that is lost, would you share that with your brother or your sister? And would you listen to them and then pray together with them? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, your prayers are powerful. Your prayers have mighty power. Your prayers are changing the course of the history of someone's life right now. Your prayers are holding back devils. Your prayers are bringing angels. Hallelujah. Come on, let's pray. Oh, 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 oh God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Touch the hearts of this people, God. Send revival to our hearts. Jesus, so that we can have revival in this church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 As Brother Miller said, there's enough, there's enough names in this place, in this little jar, to fill up this church. In fact, to probably overflow this church. So let's really pray, folks. Let's really pray. Your, your prayers are powerful. Your prayers are powerful. Your prayers hold mighty power. God has, God has designed that he, his power is linked with your prayer. Your prayers bring down the power of God. Praise God. Down to him who is able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in God. No, the power that worketh in us. 
God's power is at work through us when we pray. Praise God. All right, we're going to look to the Lord in dismissal now. Thank you all for being here. Come back tonight at 6 o'clock, and let's pray. You know, let me, let me ask this. Is there anybody, let me ask one more question. Is there anybody that, that's here because somebody prayed for you? Can I see your hand? Oh, you came all by yourself? <laughs> is there here, anybody here that somebody prayed for you? Oh, yes, there is. Folks, we need to pray for the ones that we love. Praise God. Let's lift our hands this morning now. God, we thank you for what we've heard. We thank you, Lord Jesus, Lord, that you had compassion on us. You loved us. You fed us. Lord, you gave us direction. Lord Jesus, you healed us, and we're thankful. But now, Lord, we pray for these, Lord, that need healing. These, Lord, who lack, lack direction and are lost. These that need to be fed, God. We pray for them, and we ask you to help us to bring them back to your house. In Jesus' name we pray. Come tonight at 6 o'clock for prayer, 6.30. For worship, God bless you, and thank you for being here. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.